Hi loves, it's Lacey and welcome to our space. So today we're going to be doing some fall door decor because I am behind on all my fall decorations. And as you can see, I have a lot of items here. Most of them are from Dollar Tree, like the wood plank sign, but this jute twine, the snapkin, and that towel were from a place called Debbie's Dollar Store. And then that pumpkin and these leaves here are from Hobby Lobby along with I do believe a couple of the other little decorations. So the very first thing we're going to do here for this DIY is I'm going to be taking a piece of the napkin and gluing it down to the back of this plank to make the opening where the pumpkin is have a maple leaf in it. Then I'm taking this kitchen towel. I really like it. It's nice. It is burlap and I'm folding it over and measuring how much of it I want to use to make like a kind of bag on the bottom of our sign. I'm going to cut off the excess and save that because we're going to use a piece of that and then I'm going to glue down a hem on this. I absolutely love the store where I ended up getting this towel from my girlfriend Cheryl who has her own YouTube channel called Homewood Studio. I've mentioned it before here on my channel. Took me there for my very first time and I picked this up along with those napkins that I used in another DIY you might have seen. So now here on the bottom I'm just gluing it over to make sure that it's attached to our plaque really well and then I'm going to fold the sides in and glue them down as well. I'm going to make the bottom touch each other but the top I'm going to leave them open just a little bit so it makes like a bag on the front of it so I have enough room to put some florals and things inside of it and as you can see I'm making sure I do have enough room on the front. I'm going to go ahead then and glue the sides down nice and secure. I'm using Gorilla Hot Glue in my Ryobi glue gun here. I love this battery operated glue gun. I use it all the time, you guys have known. And it's by Ryobi. You can find them on Home Depot's website. If you do go buy one, go over to Ryobi on Instagram and tell them I sent you over there to get one. But I love mine. If you are a fan of Ryobi tools, you have got to get the hot glue gun. So now, as you can see, I'm taking the extra that I cut off and I'm gonna cut out a square to cover up the back of that napkin. I'm doing this just in case I ever wanna place this outside. I have a covered porch, so I don't have to worry about it getting too wet, but I wouldn't want that to come off the back or anything to get behind it and chew through it like a bug or anything. So yeah, now I am going ahead and I'm going to hem all these edges so it just has a nice clean look to it. And then I'm going to glue it down to the back of the napkin to keep it protected. You could also glue a piece of plastic on top of the napkin to make sure it didn't get wet or anything before you put it into the window there and it'd be a lot more secure. And yes, I'm using a little spatula from Dollar Tree. It's silicone. The hot glue does not stick to it and it saves your fingers. So next, I am going to be taking this ribbon that came from Dollar Tree. It has maple leaves and stuff on it and it's in the same colors that are on the towel and in the napkin. And I'm going to be folding it around the top just to give it a little more interest and make it a little more decorative there. I'm putting a little bit of hot glue there just to hold it into place and of course I'm going to glue it all the way down on the back. I cut it a little long so I cut off the excess there for you guys and I'm going to just make sure that's nice and secure. I don't want anything flapping around in the back of it. Then after I'm done with that I have this really nice ribbon that I'm going to be adding to the front. It is the faux leather ribbon that Dollar Tree had. They had this earlier in the year and I ended up getting at least one of every color. And I think this color is kind of a burgundy wine and it goes very well with it. I didn't cut it to go all the way around because I didn't want to waste any of it. And since you're not going to see the back, I used a minimal amount of it. Now I pulled out of my stash that I didn't show you before. This ribbon, it's on a spool of four different ribbons and I'm using the orange. It came from Hobby Lobby. So all I'm doing is making a little loop over the top and then pulling the ends through. And I actually have two pieces of ribbon. So I have four ends hanging down on it and I'm going to glue that down into place with my faux leather ribbon. See how nice that looks across the edge of this? I absolutely love it how it is. And I want to apologize for how my camera's kind of angled weirdly. I didn't even know that it got bumped and so it's sideways on my desk instead of straight up and down but 
we're gonna make it work you guys you're just gonna have to ignore the messes that you see on the table off to the side and my cell phone at some point so now I'm just flipping this over onto the sides um, and flipping over the leather as you can see it doesn't touch in the middle but I didn't want to waste any of that ribbon now I'm also taking this twine and it is covered with like a jute but it's more of a of like a strawy like jute but it has the pretty same colors in it as the other parts of this DIY like the red and the green and stuff so I thought it'd be really really nice to add some of this it is difficult to work with because the wire in it is really really strong and I'm not that strong so I'm just holding it down to make sure that it sticks with my Gorilla hot glue and this took a minute as you can see all this footage is sped up because I don't want you guys to have to wait forever to see what I'm doing but that took a minute but I think it added some texture to it and I really like it so next I'm looping a metal maple leaf that came off of another Dollar Tree product. I think it came off of a candle at one point that I had in my stash and I'm looping it around and then gluing it up at the top because I want it to dangle from some of those ribbons. I'm also taking the laser cut wood cutouts in the crafter square section at Dollar Tree. I finally found the ones that had the maple leaf and I don't know what that other little leaf is called but I glued one to each one of those. And I think it's really cute that they dangle over the truck. So here now I am stuffing all of my florals inside of the bag. I have the maple leaves and the orange pumpkin from Hobby Lobby. And then I have these flock balls and some of the eucalyptus. And I think I put some wheat in there and I'm going to glue in some other small pumpkins that came off of some Dollar Tree uh, leaves in and this project is done. Look how cute this is. I had so many people ask me what I was going to do with this wood plank and if I could do something different than what they already have seen. And so this is what I came up with. I had a couple of ideas, but I thought this one was really, really cute. Tell me what you think in the comment section down below. Did I come up with something different that you guys like for this? If not, maybe I'll try to make something else with it before fall is over. So on to DIY number two. I finally found these wood rounds from Dollar Tree. I'm using them in this DIY and my next DIY that I'm gonna put out tomorrow actually. And I also have some yarn from Dollar Tree. I have some of the Waverly Antique Wax, a couple of different ribbons from Joann's along with this garland from Joann's. So we're gonna start off here first and take off my jute twine that came on the wood round and we're just going to put a coat of the Waverly wax and antique on here. I'm not going to make you guys sit here and watch me paint that. So next we're taking this yarn. It came from Dollar Tree. I like the rust color and I used a G crochet hook and I did a cable stitch. So it looks like cable knit sweater and I just made a rectangle with it. However, at the top, I put two rows of single crochet to finish it off and the bottom I did the same. And I am linking you guys to Ann Claire's Crochet Club YouTube channel because there you can learn to do the stitch. I've done the stitch a hundred times before, but I don't have time to teach you and you guys don't want to watch it from me. It's an easy stitch. It's double and triple crochets. And like I said, I added some single ones. So now I'm just fitting it around my wood round because I want it to look like this wood round wearing a cable knit sweater. And so I am then going to take some extra yarn and loop it through what would be the top I'm going to call of this, the middle pieces at the end so I can make it like I'm tying my shoes. I'm just going to crisscross this yarn, take my crochet hooks, you could do this with your fingers but I have long nails and it's a little harder, and loop these pieces through one of the bottom stitches. And then I'm going to cross them again and go through the next bottom stitch. Like you're lacing your shoes through eyelets, you're just going to go through the stitches. You're going to pull it through one side and then pull it through the other side, take those two, crisscross them, pull it through again on each side. You can see what I'm doing. And then when you get to the bottom, instead of going from side to side, you're going to go up and down. So this one's going to go to the side and then they're going to pull tight and then we're going to go through the bottom to pull the bottom up and go through the bottom of the other side to pull it up and then pull those tight and just tie them in like a double knot. 
And after you do that, you can either weave your ends through or I simply cut them off because we're going to use some hot glue and glue all of this down. We're going to start by gluing the sides on each side down at the top. And I'm just flipping it over to make sure that it's laying nice and flat for me and that the cable knits are even. And then we are going to pull up the middle and the bottom and glue that once it looks like it's nice and round. After that, I made a stencil on my Cricut. I have a Cricut Maker 3 and I ended up making a stencil by cutting out the letters that say it's sweater weather, sweater weather. And I just put that down and now I'm putting some Mod Podge over it to seal it so I can add some color to the top of that and the color won't actually bleed through underneath my stencil. I did put it down nice and evenly and I am sitting there now and stippling the color on. And this is Arteza's paint in the metallic color of pearl marmalade. I absolutely love this acrylic paint. It goes on so smooth. I will link them down below if you want to check it out and get you some. It came in a pack of eight and I absolutely love all of their paints. So now I took the garland that I had from Joanne Fabrics and I started peeling off pieces and placing them so I can glue them down just to decorate this up some. I live in Michigan and we look forward to the changing of the leaves and all of the fall things going to the cider mills and stuff and so I had someone ask me could I make them something that was more kind of masculine themed and not so frufruity and making it look more like it was a uh, fall for going on hikes out at the cider mill or going to see the leaves change up north and so this is what I came up with and now I decided of course it needs a bow and I decided I haven't made a lacy space bow in a long time so I was going to make a smaller version of my lacy space bow so this is what I'm doing here so I start out with my widest ribbon and I loop it around and now I'm putting my next widest ribbon on top of that and looping it around right over it and then I'm going to take my thinnest ribbon this one's from Dollar Tree and looping that right over it the other two ribbons are from Joanne Fabrics and I picked them both up this year they're on clearance right now for 60% off if you want to go check that out and I did these loops three times so normally I loop my stuff five six times and make a big old bow this is a smaller wood round so I only did it three times and here I am cutting off the thinner ribbons in shorter like tails and then the wider ribbons are going to be in long tails and I'm going to tell you right now I changed this all up you'll see in a second that even though I tried I tried my hardest to make this bow a whole lot smaller than I normally do if you guys are familiar with my channel you know I'm extra and everything I do is extra extra all the decorations on this is so extra and I just could not get it as small as I wanted on my initial try. So I'm taking some floor wire. This came from Michaels. This is on clearance right now there too. I really like the color of this wire. It's kind of like a off-white and it goes with everything. You don't see it very well. So I'm taking that and I'm just wrapping it all around the center of this bow. Now normally on my Lacy Space bow, especially if it's a really big bow, I cut through on the sides so I can get it as thin in the middle as I can and I put the wire in there just a little bit and I make sure when I do the cuts on the sides they're not directly across from each other but since this was going to be a much smaller bow and I only had one thick ribbon I knew I could get away with not cutting the sides and just pulling the pieces out like I'm doing here so once you put the wire on there you just pull the layers apart and I always pull them apart before I cut them because if I cut them before I pull them apart, they don't end up being as even most of the time. And I don't mind that because my bows are called a whimsical chaotic mess bow. That's what I named them. And I like them when they look a little off, a little chaotic. <laughs> I think they look really whimsical then. So as you can see here, I cut those in what I call a double dovetail. Like I cut a triangle out of it when I bend the piece in half and then bend it in half long ways and then I cut a triangle out of the end and it does that double little notch. And then I'm taking the 
next widest ribbon, which is the burgundy one, and I'm cutting those into points. I decided I really wanted this one to be different than the other ones that I always do. So the smallest ribbon is just cut on an angle. The largest ribbon is cut with a triangle out of the middle of it folded in half twice. So you fold it in half, then you fold it the long way and you cut a triangle out and then the other one's cut in points. And as you can see, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> and normally I'd be like, okay i love it but it's a little too busy even for me i just think that it has too much on it because i did a lot of decoration on the side and the bowl is too big for the wood round so i took out all of those uh ribbons there i took off the long tails with the leaves and i took out a couple of pieces because it was huge as you can see i said it was huge i can use these over in another project so I'm saving these pieces I never trash anything I took out two of those but one of them didn't survive because it was only a small piece after I cut it and so I'm gonna put those away for later also if you notice I added on another piece of the kind of rust colored ribbon and I have another piece here to make it even on both sides I don't necessarily have to have it symmetrical but I think it's a little heavier on the one side so I want to add this piece in too so I'm just putting some glue on either side and I'm gluing it actually to the wood round and I'm just holding it down to make sure that it stays uh, I really love that little spatula because a hot glue hardly sticks to it and you don't have to worry about it also as you can see I have all these little raffia pieces there next to me and I'm cutting the rest of them out I pointed to show you I didn't like them in there so I took them out I thought I'd like them, but see how less busy that looks, and I, I really like it better. I also am cutting down the little thin ribbons so they don't stick out as far as well, and I think the bow looks really, really nice. Now that one piece that I just put in of ribbon, I'm just letting that harden, letting it dry, and I decided while I wait, I'm going to put in some of these green maple leaves. These are the maple green and red ivy um, garland from Hobby Lobby that I had from a long time ago. I put this in my gazebo and I had one left over and I've been using this for a long time, adding it to different projects and I thought it was really, really pretty. I like it because it's green, but there is red on the leaves as well. So it looks like the change of season. And like I said before, they wanted uh, something made that looked like you know the change of fall here in Michigan and so I really like this I actually put in some other leaves that I had in my stash that were kind of like an orangey or rusty kind of color too for change of season and now I am fluffing that extra piece of ribbon I just kind of wrap it around my finger to make the little bends and then I just fluff it up and I think it looks a whole lot better and now this project is done I also I don't know if I pointed out that I put in all these little metallic little leaves. They came in a little bag from Hobby Lobby. I know Michael's had them as well. I'm pretty sure Joanne's probably had them too and Dollar Tree had something similar. I just glued a bunch of them in the gold and the bronzy color and a little bit of kind of this red color on them to give it an extra pop. And I love how this turned out. See, you can see the cable net so well. It's sweater weather, you guys, and I love how this turned out. It's kind of rustic, it's warm, and it's Michigan in fall. So tell me what you think down below. I know it didn't look like the wording shows up, but it shows up nice and bright in here inside the house. So I love it. And for our last DIY, I had a request. I had a request for all of these DIYs. Wow. I had a request to do a swag for the door. I had a couple of people say that their swags were not holding up very well and they want to see how I put one together and what I use for the base. So for the base of all of my swags, I just use florals. I normally don't put them on any kind of base. Um, uh, you could use like a wire hanger or something or maybe use the Dollar Tree witch hat and turn it upside down to do that or something. I don't know I never do so we're just gonna use a bunch of florals so I have some from Dollar Tree some from Hobby Lobby 
and some from Joanne Fabrics. Joanne Fabrics has a huge sale right now on all their fall florals. And so I went there and I ended up picking up quite a few things. Me and my girlfriend Cheryl spent quite a bit of money there. But I have a lot of florals that I absolutely love, including this orange bush. What it is, I don't know. They call it an orange bush and it's going to be one of the stars of this swag. So I'm starting off with this. I don't know what this is called either. It's called Bush from Joanne Fabrics and I have two of them. I place them next to each other and I'm going to zip tie them together. Now you can see they're pretty sparse in the middle. That's because over next to me, you might be able to see by the orange, I pulled off a lot of them that were in the middle because it's unnecessary for them to be there. And I want to stick some into my actual swag when I'm putting it together so I have that flow through the whole thing and it's not just on the back. But that's going to be my base and I zip tied it all together and now I'm going to put these beautiful orange pieces. I love this. I When I saw it, I'm like, I want to make something with it. I know it's kind of funky looking. I think that's why I love it. But I am going to be putting this down in the middle here. And look, I, this is basically fresh from the store. And it fits there so perfectly. I also took the greenery that's here at the bottom that I just cut the zip ties off. And I cut the bottom handle off of it because it was too long. And now I'm going to be zip tying it to the orange piece. I don't use zip ties for the whole thing. But this way it gives it a nice base to be putting other things on top of it and it's already pretty much in the shape of a swag so I love that. Now I'm taking this pick that came from Hobby Lobby and you saw I put down the screen pieces by it. They were sticking out the side and I didn't like where they were. We're still going to use it. We're going to put them right down at the bottom here and make a base to put other things on. So I just take pieces apart and this is how I do a lot of my swags and a lot of my reefs that I ever put together. I put the pieces in, make sure I see where they go and where I want them, and then I take them out and I glue them down or I zip tie them down. Now I am taking the extra part of the pick and I also zip tied it down already. I figured you didn't need to see me zip tie it. You saw where I had placed it before, so it's zip tied down. Now I'm taking these leaves. They came from Joanne Fabrics. It, I have a big, huge thing of them. And so I just cut some of them off and I'm just going to hot glue them down to some of the pieces and stick them out. I just want this to be super full. I was asked to make one that's super full and to see how I did my base. And so this is how I did my base. And now all I do is I take picks and either put the whole pick in like I did this one. Those came from Joanne Fabrics as well. I think those were like $1.99 and so like 60% off. So that's a great deal. Like I said, if you want floral picks or even if you're thinking that you're doing a lot of crafts for next year, I'd go and to Joanne's. This is not sponsored by them. It's not sponsored by anybody, but they have a lot, a lot at the stores right now. And I was very surprised at that here in Michigan. Anyway, Southeast Michigan. So. So now I am just going to continue to glue things in and I make sure they're not like right next to each other if it's the same item. I want this to look like it basically grew the way that I put it together. So I take apart certain picks like this one. I'm using some wire cutters and I'm cutting off of these acorns and I'm doing individual acorns. Stick it in, see if I like it where it goes and then glue it down. And then other things I might just take off the head of a flower and stick it in. And then others I might use the entire pick, especially if it's a smaller pick. And I know you guys are probably looking at this going, those orange things are crazy and why does she have one big sunflower there? But I like the colors. I like the bright fall colors. And for me, there's... It's just your personal preference and I'm going to add in some of those other white ones and so it's going to draw it all together plus with the bow that I'm going to make. I think you're going to see how it all turns out and comes together. So here I'm zip tying on the back again because I wanted to put some of those dahlias and the bright orange that came from Dollar Tree in and I want to keep them on the stem. So a lot of the things that I keep on the stem that are like 
heavy duty stems that might move around I zip tie in and then other ones that are like little lighter things that I can put a little glue on the flower I might just glue them in and again I'm using Gorilla hot glue in my Ryobi glue gun. I always use Gorilla hot glue because it stands up to heat and it stands up to cold and high winds and stuff most of the time especially if you want to put it outside and I do believe this whole piece can just go outside like even if it was rained on or snowed on it won't get damaged because all of these flowers are pretty durable so now I'm just going to continue to add in things I have some eucalyptus pieces that I have off of a pick from Hobby Lobby so I shoved some of those in you can see I put some of the white flowers to help draw in the white for the big sunflower at the top and now I am taking some of the pieces of that under piece of um, pick like the first pick we used the one that was called a bush <laughs> I don't know what that is but I thought it was beautiful and I'm taking all those pieces that I had left over the pieces I took off the back and I'm shoving them in in the top and the front under the edges where it needed on the outer portion and stuff that's why I took them off so it looked like it was actually growing out of that kind of bush and once I get all of those in the floral part is really going to be done. I didn't even use half of the flowers that I have over on the other sides. I really, the orange pick and the underneath part was a full pick each time. I had two of the greenery and one of the orange and then the rest of it I just used pieces. So now I'm going to make a bow and I'm sorry that I'm pretty much out of frame for this but it is just a regular bow that you would tie but it's triple so I did one loop on one side one loop on the other side pinched it in the middle and then I did the same thing I just wrapped it around to a loop, a loop on the opposite side and you can see there's just three loops on one side and three loops on the other side and then I left a long tail on the bottom so I'm gonna take a zip tie and put it around the whole thing and then pull the tail that I left hanging and I also made sure because this this ribbon says thankful on it that all the thankfuls were going the same direction so none of them would be really upside down and I pull the tail of that ribbon through the zip tie and I'm gonna turn it over and then tighten it up and I'm just kind of straighten it out to make sure I know that when I tighten that zip tie up it's not gonna make any of the loops move too much so I'm pulling the piece that I wrapped all the way around the ribbon, the tail part. And I hope you understand that. If not, you can just not leave a long tail. You can just put a zip tie around it and then get another piece of ribbon and wrap around the middle to make that knot in the middle and just glue it on back and then add tails on later. I just left a tail. That's how I normally do my things. And then I'm just checking to see that it fits there and it, it does. But before we glue this down and fluff it up real nice, I'm going to take that orange ribbon from Dollar Tree and I'm going to cover the handles. And I'm not even going to cut any of them out because they're thin enough and it'll be pretty enough to do it. So I'm just going around this really quickly. I'm not being perfect. I'm putting a little bit of hot glue because I'm going to do it twice. I'm going to go up it and then here I am coming down. I sped this footage up but I'm being really careful this time so it looks pretty and putting a couple little dots of hot glue to make sure it doesn't move and I'm making this look pretty as I go back down and I didn't use all of it I do cut off a piece and I have a piece left and I had already used a little bit of that ribbon too so it comes I think it's nine feet of ribbon and I probably used about two feet of ribbon to cover that handle and once I get it all covered nicely, I'm just going to put some hot glue on it and I leave it like that. Then I'm going to take another tail, just going to cut off another piece of ribbon. I dovetailed the end and I'm going to glue it down to the handle and then glue my bow down and dovetail the end of the other side, the other tail that I left, the other extra long piece of ribbon that I left. I hope all this makes sense. You guys can see what I did. You guys are used to me being extra and doing it like this and it's done look at how full and beautiful this looks doesn't this look amazing I love the colors I love how it turned out I can tell you right now 
I already don't have it because the person that's claimed it is my mother. She's decided it's hers. She wanted a nice full swag too. And so the person who asked me actually was in another um, state and they just wanted me to show how to do it. So I didn't make it for them. I was just doing a tutorial for them, but my mom thought and she's already like, this is replacing the one that's on my door. And no, I didn't make the other one. I did enhance it for her a little, but she loves this and it's going on her door. So let me know down below which one of these DIYs was your favorite. Would you put any of these out for fall? I absolutely love this one's colors and everything. I love how the other one for sweater weather turned out. I think it was nice and it'd be great in a lodge or something. I really like this fall bag one as well. I can't pick a favorite. You guys let me know which one you like. I want to thank you guys also for watching and for always liking my videos. And if you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. I've got another video coming out for you tomorrow that shows my lacy space bow really, really well. I think you guys are going to love it. I use another wood round in it too. Also, if you like, you can follow me over on Instagram, but that is it for this video and I will catch you in my next one. Bye loves.